Good morning, everyone. Bonjour, mademoiselle, mes amis. That's all the French I know, and I'm sorry I don't know more Spanish. Um, hola. Good morning. That's it. Um, thank you for coming today for our Ascension Sunday service and pre-Pentecost celebration with our international brunch. It's exciting to see all of you here. Um, I hope everyone has a service leaflet, an insert, and a hymnal. If you need one, raise your hand and the ushers will be happy to bring them to you. Just one word about um, the first hymn. We are going to start with verse six. I mean, sorry, verse three. Verse six is the last one. We're gonna sing three, four, five, and six, rather than one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's just way too long. So when we begin our service, um, please start with verse three. We'll, we'll sing Hail Thee Festival Day and then go into verse three. Right, Carolyn? Okay. No, no turn pages. It just, there are two different, tunes you'll just keep going from three to four back up to five to six yeah and singing the refrain so and thank you for all the goodies you've brought we do have um, some index cards that you can write down what it is you brought and what the ingredients are we do have some vegetarians among us so it would be helpful to know if there's meat in the dishes and where they're from what heritage they come from so those index cards are on the table under the Alleluia banner.
If you'd like, feel free to stand. If not, please turn to, and either way, turn to page 216 in your hymnal. We will start with verse 3 of Hail Thee Festival Day. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Church, I was going to say, of the Ascension. Welcome to St. Nick's on this Ascension Sunday. It's a past church that I started in and that some of us came from. Anyway, welcome to Church of uh, St. Nicholas on this Ascension Sunday. We're glad you're here in person and joining us by live stream. Our service continues in your white service leaflet. Alleluia, Christ is risen and ascended. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praying together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to, God, to you to all hearts, hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the collect for this day found in your yellow insert. Praying together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, whose blessed, blessed Son, Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, Christ, ascended far above all heavens, heavens that, that he might fill all things. things. Mercifully give us faith to perceive that according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 47. We will pray it responsibly. You need to speak up because you're not being heard. Sorry. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with cry of joy. For the Lord, the Lord most high is to be feared. He is the great king over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the natures under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is king of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, and he is highly exalted. reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, 
not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today we celebrate Ascension Day on Ascension Sunday. Actually, Ascension Day was on Thursday, which is 40 days from the celebration of Easter. Ascension Day is a principal feast of the church here, and it can be moved to Sunday. And as I said, it's the occasion in which we just heard when our risen Christ was taken into heaven after appearing to his followers for 40 days. 
and it marks the conclusion of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances. Ascension is the final elevation of Jesus as human to his divine glory and the nearer presence of God. Now, as Bible scholars that you all are, I'm sure that you know that Luke is the only evangelist that records the ascension. The Gospels of Matthew and John refer to Jesus' going away and coming back again. And Mark, well, Mark never mentions the ascension at all. Yet Luke records it. And our Nicene and Apostles' Creed affirm the ascension of Jesus, as well as our Eucharistic prayers that we have at our great thanksgiving. So for some of us, we might wonder why only one gospel writer referred to the ascension. And doing a little research on my own, one commentator offered an explanation to this conundrum by saying, the gospels reflect different views on how the kingdom of God was going to be established either by interruptions through history, through the coming of Jesus from heaven, or through the transformation of history by the issuing of the kingdom of God on earth. In other words, Jesus going to heaven and then eventually at some point coming back again, or just us having to create the kingdom of God on earth. We don't know, we don't have the answers. We may know one day in the future, but time will tell whether Jesus will return, and we as followers of Jesus in this in-between time of Jesus rising and coming back, we are to be about building the kingdom of God here and now. Like the disciples who were in the temple worshiping God after Jesus' ascension, we are gathered here to continue to worship God and to take the good news out into the community. Now, before Jesus ascends to heaven, he reminds the disciples that he himself is the embodiment, the fulfillment of the scriptures from Moses to the prophets and through the Psalms. And not only did he tell them that, but he opened their minds so that they would, not for the first time, but yet again, understand what he's been teaching them one last time. Jesus knows that this is his imparting and departing words, and he wants them to get it to understand that they are and that he is the embodiment of the scriptures and they are the ones to carry it forward. And he assures them that he will send them the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will continue to empower them to proclaim the good news and the repentance of forgiveness of sins. And then as Jesus is heading to heaven, lifted up to heaven, he blesses them. His final act with his followers is to bless them. And this time, this time after Jesus leaves them, according to Luke, the disciples aren't filled with fear and trepidation. They don't go and lock themselves in the room for fear that they might too be crucified. Rather, they go into the temple, into the community. They are worshiping God and Jesus, and they're filled with great joy as they worship. They have that confidence and that power because they have been with this resurrected friend of theirs for 40 days. And they know what he said to be true. I will come back. I will come back and show you that I will rise, that I have risen, and that you are the ones to carry on the legacy of my life. Jesus promises them that he will be with them even though he is not physically present. And like us, we might relate with these disciples to be in that in-between time. They were privileged to travel and to journey with Jesus, to learn from him, to celebrate with him, to mourn with him, and to find themselves able to heal others, to understand and know that Jesus, the one that they walked with, they journeyed with, who they prayed with, that Jesus was the Messiah, the one sent from God. And yet they had to say goodbye to him again. But this time, his leaving fills them with expectation and joy and the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so you know that I've shared about my mother who's 92. She is, and I should say 92 years young. <clears throat> As we found out last weekend, her collarbone, which she broke 
left in two places is not healing, and there's really nothing that can be done. So she has moved into long-term care, and she is recovering remarkably well, walking with her walker down the halls, which she hasn't done for two months, and she needs assistance. But it also means that she's given up the home that she's lived in with her husband for what did I say, 2005, somebody do the math, 17 years, 18 years. And she's living in that in-between time, that in-between time of being independent and waiting for God to call her home. She says, and I think I mentioned this last week, she's two steps closer to heaven now. I'm not sure where the two comes from, but she thinks it's two, so. But she's joyful, she's confident, she feels blessed as she waits for what is next. And she has an incredibly deep faith that knows that she has had a wonderful life, a wonderful husband, wonderful family, and a wonderful group of friends who continue to visit her and help her and take care of her. She has a life full of meaning and full of joy. And she feels blessed. And as her daughters, we all feel blessed that she is taking this next step with such joy and and peace. And we too, while we're not 92 years young and we may be in good health, we are in that in-between time as we all are between birth and the ashes. We were formed out of dust and to dust we shall return, not to bring up an Ash Wednesday memory, but that's how we've started, creation started. God breathed into the ash and the dust and life was formed. Jesus knows that we are in that in-between time. And we also know that next Sunday, we will commemorate the action of the Holy Spirit coming among the first disciples, where all the tribes and languages and nations were at the temple because it was the festival of Pentecost. And as they spoke in languages that were unfamiliar to one another, they were able to understand one another. That Holy Spirit empowered them to understand, to have their minds and their hearts opened. Our own journey of faith reminds us that we are to open our hearts and our minds to understand God's movement, the Spirit's movement among, among the whole community of God. So as we live and move and have our being in this in-between time, I want to share again the words of Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. This was his prayer and mine to you. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give all of us a spirit of wisdom and revelation as we come to know him more and more deeply, so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know what is the hope to which God has called each one of us, what are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe according to the working of God's great power? May we find our hearts ascending to God and to the Holy Spirit, who is with us always, even until the end of the age. Amen. Please stand as you are able or desire and turn to page three in your service leaflet that we may together affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion in those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those who are on our prayer list. for Nancy and John, and for John, the funeral of John's father in Scotland, and for the wedding of their son in Greece. For Roman's friend, and for Roman. For Joan. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. Peace the Lord. God's peace, Jennifer. God's peace, Jennifer. God's peace, the Lord. Peace the Lord. Peace the Lord. Peace the Lord. Peace the Lord. It's like doing the hokey pokey. God's peace, the Lord. God's peace, Lord. God's peace, Lord. God's peace, Lord. So you made some fish cakes, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will, I'm from the Caribbean. Of course. Yes, of course. Peace I know some. So I made so I made bakes and salt fish. Peace, John. <laughs> peace, God's Lord. peace with you, sweetheart. I was your name. Peace. Isabel. God's peace be with you. So you came back. God's peace be with you. God's peace, guys. God's peace. God's peace be with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor, do his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Jesus Christ. Right. Please stand as you are able for the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer B on page five. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection and ascension of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life he, again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice and praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Nicholas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember that Christ died and lives for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Oh yeah, I forgot the, thank you. <laughs> you ready? Ready. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body, oh, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. Bob, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Bob. <laughs> That's okay. The body of Christ, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. We're going to form a semicircle, or we're going to try. Perfect. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. You can say, thank you. I'm just kidding. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Would you like to receive? You can? You can. Okay. I will bless you then. The blessing of God, the love of God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you now and remain with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Go in peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven. Go in peace. the bread of heaven the body of Christ the bread of heaven the body of Christ the bread of heaven come with me fill the body of Christ the bread of heaven Harbor the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray for those who are joining us by live stream for spiritual communion. Beloved Jesus, we believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into our hearts. 
we embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Let us never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Amen. Prayer after communion, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always accepted you, and loves you unconditionally. Go in peace to follow the good road. And may God's blessing, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Welcome to, uh, welcome to St. Nick's this morning on Ascension Sunday. Sorry, there's something going on in my brain, which is not bad, don't worry. Um, next Sunday, Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. We won't have fire except for the candles, which may or may not choose to be staying lit. There's a breeze that comes straight down on that poor thing. Anyway, please wear red, orange, yellow, or something that symbolizes fire. Some of you have already prematurely done that. That's great. We're happy to have that. Um, but next Sunday is Big Red Sunday, so we're glad to have you wearing red. Um, two weeks after Sunday, on the 11th of June, our beekeeper, Ari Benjaminson, is going to be here um, after worship. And any of you who would like to go and little, uh, learn a little bit about our apiary and the colonies which are the boxes um, and how he's working with the bees you're welcome to go out after the service and learn from Ari he has some um, extra garments and one the size of his eight-year-old grandchild so a little person could fit into it I think um, or an adult that's little um, 
We are not working today in the garden right after church. We are after church, so have lunch, come back, go have lunch, come back, have, anyway. Um, we're working in the garden. And on the 19th of June is a Monday. Um, we are part of a community of interfaith congregations that are going to be celebrating Juneteenth. It's from 6.30 on till after the reception. We would love for as many people from, from St. Nick's, geez, to be here. <laughs> Stop it, Beth. We would love for as many of you to be here as be there as possible. It's going to be at Prince of Peace Lutheran, which is down the road on Route 28, right next to the Pleasant View uh, Methodist Church that is being renovated, but was an historically is an historically black congregation. If you haven't seen the movie or the documentary Founding um, Fellow Finding Fellowship. We'll talk more about that, but there's a wonderful story about how Fairhaven Methodist got to be a, a, co a coordination between three congregations, and um, two of them were historically black congregations. Anyway, Juneteenth, Monday the 19th at 6.30 at Prince of Peace. I got a note from Ruth Bedore, who is our coordinator for the food pantry. We are, she says, low on most items. If you would please make the announcement today. Um, they especially need cereal, canned fruit, tuna or canned meat, and spaghetti sauce. So if you'd like to buy those items, I will put this in the announcement um, with the sermon that'll go out tomorrow um, to let you know cereal, canned fruit, canned meat, and spaghetti sauce. Um, those donations would be particularly helpful at this time of year. Um, if you haven't already labeled your wonderful meal or the wonderful item you brought, um, please do so. We are um, we have actually now gotten two large tables with main dishes, which is great, and then the desserts. So um, let us go forth and bless the food. We'll dismiss us after breakfast or after our brunch. Sandra will put you on hold for a while. During our brunch, I'm going to pass around the microphone because I would like for each of us to introduce ourselves and tell everybody how about how long you've been at St. Nick's and what you love about it, and then what ministry you're involved in. Okay, so three things, your name, how long you've been here, what ministry you're involved in or want to be involved in, and if you chair a ministry, please announce that so that we can know who to connect. Actually, let me just do that right now. Um, Ruth, Will Banks, Alter Guild, please stand. And uh, Audrey Thompson, ushers, please stand. John Lightfoot, finance. Bob McCartan, Senior Warden. Vestry, this is Vestry. Um, Carolyn, Choir. Charlotte, Prayer Group. Who am I missing? Mark, our Digital Ministry um, Manager. We need more people. Alicia. Uh, Alicia's in the kitchen. She, does, she doesn't know it, but she's kind of coordinating hospitality and events with me. Um, and she does flowers. Who am I missing? Oh, Mindy. Oh, Mindy's the assistant treasurer. God forbid I should forget that. Mindy takes care of all your donations um, and pledges. So please um, make sure if you have any questions, you tackle, I mean, you, you speak to Mindy. Thank you. We will pass around the microphone. Um, I'm going to suggest that we start with, I'm going to suggest we start with this table over here and they begin our brunch. And we go from this table then the second table, then the long table, then you see what I'm doing here? One, two, long table, long table, long table, long table, long, short, right. Mindy? Bob can certainly go first. <laughs> Let's give Bob a hand as senior warden. <laughs> and he can go first. Bob, I need you to, sorry. In case anyone's still on live stream and wants to hear this. I mean, Bob's got great things to say. I guess. Um, so Mindy and I joined just uh, before the building went up. Uh, so we've been here a while, as with many people I see here. Um, and uh, my role has been to work on the vestry and to work on the FAR committee, um, and currently as a senior warden. And let's see, were we supposed to talk about food at the same time too, or no? No, no. okay. We'll just start with this table to eat. But he, okay. He, he had something to say about his food. Oh, I'll, I'll just, real, real quick, so. Whatever you say, Mindy. 
just real quick, so um, you've probably <laughs> never heard of fr fry bread, um, but uh, there's a book on it, and um, uh, from where Mindy's roots are in Tucson, the Navajo would make that. And she has a smidgen of Native American in her past that's not well documented, let's say. Um, so for the, uh, for the tacos that are there, the bread for that is fry bread. So it's worth a try, it's different, it tastes good. I had some yesterday. I'm Carolyn Dybel. I've been here probably, I think, 96. Um, and um, I'm the music director. Um, we are really growing in the choir. We're not quite sure what we're going to do with um, all the chairs, but we'll figure it out. Um, and I just want to say one thing to everybody. I am just so proud of the way you all sing out on Sundays. It is just amazing. And <laughs> it, yeah. So thank you for all that enthusiasm and joy. Yeah, I'm going to hold the microphone for a minute so we can eat, and then we can talk with our mouthfuls. So why don't you go start the list, start the. So we'll hold the microphone for a while, and then we'll start up again. Unless anybody's leaving and needs to talk now. like. Okay. Lynette. 